Boris Johnson said going green is easy, but it isn't that easy because we're about to make this transition from a sort of carbon-based energy world to uh, hopefully a renewable-based energy world, but we're not quite there yet. Welcome to another Breakout with Breaking Views, sponsored by PGIM. I'm speaking with Edward Chancellor, who's in London today. Eddie, you wrote a piece about the energy markets and what's going on out there. And one of the, 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 the most interesting things about it is you point out how Boris Johnson, the British prime minister, was just at the UN General Assembly in New York saying, hey, folks, going green is going to be easy. Well, fast forward, not very far, two weeks or so, and we see how difficult it is. What's going on with the energy markets right now? The problem is that there has been a lack of an imbalance in the uh, in the oil market from before COVID. Uh, so um, as, as you're aware, the incremental uh, source of new energy of oil over the last decade has come from uh, US shale. And the trouble with US shale, as you as you also know, is that it turned out to be immensely unprofitable. And recently, uh, you know, Chesapeake Energy and Whiting Petroleum, two of the biggest players, ha have gone down. Now, that so the fracking was already in decline in the US pre-COVID. Then COVID hit, and what happened? There was no demand for oil, and storage uh, ran out, and the price of oil went negative for the first time in history. So what did the producers... And nobody had any incentive to produce new oil, to put new drill in. No, so the, so the producers cut their spending by 30% last year. And since 2013, according to the International Energy Agency, the spending uh, investment uh, in, in, in oil and gas has fallen from 800, roughly 800 billion uh, in 2013 to below 350 uh, billion in the current year. So we, we have seen increasing demand over that period, uh, but the amount of investment has fallen. And, one, and it's, here's some, some sort of interesting pieces of data. US oil rig count down 50%. Global oil rig count down 50%. Uh, US uh, capital in uh, US uh, uh, S&P energy companies, the capital investment relative to depreciation below 50%, at 43%. In other words, we are extracting oil. We still need oil, but we're not uh, replacing it. And that is going to give us a shortage. And at the same time, what's happened with demand? The demand has recovered from the great lockdown. You know, every, as a, as a sort of guy I was speaking to uh, uh, for this column said, you know, the, the, the best PPE is your car. US traffic levels are back above 2019 levels. The airline industry is coming back. Look, even Australia is you know, ceasing to be the hermit kingdom. Flights are going to come back. To Australia. So gradually, that, that could be an extra two to three million barrels uh, of oil, to, uh, demand, extra demand a day. There is, another, there is another source of demand, which I think is overlooked, is that the transition to alternative energy requires a lot of investment. John Hess of Hess Corporation, I mean, cites a figure, uh, you know, I think was it 13, 14 trillion dollars of investment. And as he says, I think it's quite right, that investment is going to require a lot of oil. So if we're going to make the jump to the alternative energy, we're going to actually have to pump more oil in the but near to, to, to build the steel that goes into the wind turbines and the solar panel. That basically, it's as simple as that, isn't it? Yes, and as my old boss, Jeremy Grantham, who's a sort of investor and environmentalist says, if you're going to build a windmill, the energy that goes into building the windmill, it, it takes four years for that windmill to generate the energy that went into making it. So the payback period is, is only after four years that you're going to get any incremental, uh, you're going to get any incremental energy supply. So we need more, uh, we need more, energy to make to make the transition and i think what the tragedy is is that the the esg investors you know who uh, environmental uh, you know have environmental concerns fair enough but they don't seem to realize that if the world they want to bring into being <laughs> is to be realized uh, they're going to have we're going to have to hold our noses and pump more of the black stuff 
So what are the investment consequences of all this, of, of, of the, the, the sort of mismatch between supply and demand, the, the, what's happening in the energy markets? For just in general, financial assets, what does it all mean? Well, I think that what we're seeing at the moment is the, is the most significant development of the financial market since the so-called Bear Stearns moment in the summer of 2007, when the, when the Bear hedge funds invested in subprime stuff. Uh, went down. And that was a sort of wake up call. But if you remember, most investors <laughs> didn't pay any attention to that wake up call because they didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> so let, let me tell you what I think is going to happen is I think the oil price, which is now around $80, I think Goldman says going up to 90. But, uh, you know, some of the OPEC members think if we carry on with what they call energy starvation, it'll go up to 200. Uh, $200 a barrel. I think if we get anywhere, you know, we're really sort of far north of $100 a barrel, the first thing you do is stop the global economic recovery in its track. The second thing, as you're probably aware, is that every oil spike has been followed by a stock market crash. 2008, I and mean, I was working at GMO time, we were short oil. <laughs> it went up to $140 uh, dollars a barrel, and then it crashed to 35 I think the, the stock market bubble is over. There is, there is, as I say in the piece, the central bankers who have sort of elevated, uh, have, uh, you know, ev- have, have worked against every bus for the last 25 years. Now, I think they will be powerless. There is nothing they can do. If they print money into an oil shock, they will cause inflation, as happened in 1973. And that's the other thing that I think follows from it, is that I think inflation, for all the talk of inflation being transitory and so forth, I think inflation is back. And that's been a theme of a lot of pieces I've written for you, is that investors need to think about inflation hedging. And I'm afraid that takes you back to things like tips, even if they have negative yields, and that takes you to gold. And one of the nice things about gold, which I point in this piece, is it has a huge embedded energy content. Energy. So <laughs> it, more, let's say it has more embedded energy content than Bitcoin. But so, it sounds like what I really should be doing is buying oil. Yeah, you should be buying oil. And then there are two ways to buy oil. And as I say in the piece, you know, people are disinvesting from energy, and um, they raise the cost of capital. And the thing that every investor ought to know is when the cost of capital is high, everything else being equal, the return should be high. So I compare the oil companies to tobacco companies. They may not be around you know, for in 30, 40 years time as we know them. But in the meantime, I think investors will get high returns. Now there, there are some, and in fact, actually the prices of these companies, which is already rising, uh, I think they will have to continue rising. So I think that the, the energy sector is going to outperform the rest of the market. Uh, and I also think actually energy hedges your, your stock market exposure. But the other thing you can do is if I'm you know, half right, uh, is you can, um, you can buy uh, oil futures, there's even an oil ETF. And the nice thing is that the oil market is in backdation, so the futures price is lower than spot. And, I, and there are very few investors currently in the market. I think that you know the the, the uh, Wall Street bets guys are going to be getting into oil shortly. So I think so, okay, so so it may not be very ESG friendly, but it's the way to uh, to hedge and to probably get it through. If if, if any chancellor's latest view about the, uh, the the market is correct, well, thanks, Eddie. Appreciate that. And we'll be back with another breakout from Breaking Views soon. Thanks, Rob. Bye.